What's up everybody, my name is Blake, welcome to my channel. If you don't already know, I run a software development agency and on my YouTube channel I post different tutorials and videos on how to get into software development, how to build awesome applications, how to grow an agency and everything else from there on. So today what I'm going to be talking to you about is Redis and how you can actually use Redis to increase performance on any application that you build specifically with .NET, C Sharp .NET Core. Um, so we recently used this in an application uh, that was calculating a ton of data on the fly for users. Typically a page load, an API call would take five to ten minutes because of how much data we were actually calculating, uh, which is a huge issue. You can't have users wait on the page for five or ten minutes. So what we did is we switched the approach. So our servers, the server side would start processing the data. It would push it into a Redis cache and then the next time the user came to visit the site it would pull from the cache and not actually process it all at that runtime. So that's the beautiful part about Redis and we're going to show you how you can incorporate it in any of your .NET Core apps today. So let's jump into it. Um, the first thing, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need to download a few items here. The first is Redis Desktop Manager. I highly recommend this if you're on Windows specifically. If you're on Mac or Linux, um, I believe there's other GUIs that you can download for free, but um, Windows has pretty minimal support for Redis because it's natively a Linux um, application, so you can still run it on Windows, but it's not um, it's not necessarily where you should. In a production environment, I would recommend installing it on Ubuntu or some other Linux distribution uh, because it's much easier and uh, much more up to date. So, first thing you're going to need is the desktop manager, uh, whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, either one. Um, you're going to need Redis itself as well. Uh, for, for Windows, you can actually use this link. I'll put it in the description so you guys can go to it. Um, you'll download it from this GitHub link. The last time it was up, updated was uh, 2011, December 28th, but it still works flawlessly. Um, apparently, there hasn't been a whole lot of changes because we just deployed. Uh, we did all of our testing and development on this version and then deployed to a production environment in Linux, and it worked flawlessly. Um, so I don't think the tech has really changed a whole lot, so you should be fine with this. Once you download it, you're actually going to get all of these files and to run it locally all you have to do is run the Redis server. This will spin up Redis. Um, it's running on port 6379. Uh, Localhost obviously, no password or anything like that. Um, so pretty easy to access. So once you've got that running and you've got your desktop manager here as well, um, you can actually connect to it. So I've got my connection string settings here, local Redis, localhost 6379 and that's it. All you got to do and you can see all of the items in your queue. Uh, right now it shows that we have one that's for another project I've been working on. Um, so let me show you how you actually configure this in .NET now. I've got a project set up here. Pretty straightforward. It's just a .NET Core 3.0 uh, web API. So we've got one controller, a Redis controller, our startup and our program file and that's really it. Um, the biggest thing in your main project, you're going to need to add two packages, Easy Caching in Memory and Easy Caching Redis. Easy Caching is a library that somebody created that allows you to interface with things like Redis, um, an in-memory store that's uh, native with .NET Core, um, all types of other different caching mechanisms, mechanisms as well. We just choose to use Redis and their base and memory um, library for it. So once you have those, you can install those through the NuGet Package Manager. Um, that's very easy to do, or you can just reference them in the CS project and um, refresh your references, obviously. So once you've got those in there, you should be good to go. You're going to want to add a method to um, your startup file. This is pretty straightforward. You're just adding easy caching, uh, passing in through some options, and then configuring Redis here. Um, I will also include this whole code package in a GitHub repository, so if you'd like to take a look at it, Feel free to do it. This stuff just is kind of repetitive, so not really a whole lot of use in me showing you how to actually type it out. So once you've configured that, basically what you're doing is you're setting the endpoints. Um, we're obviously pointing to localhost with port 6379. Um, some people, if you're deploying to a production environment, you should have a password. It should be password protected. Um, so you can configure that pretty easily as well, just passing in uh, with the database configuration a password, and it will authenticate with a pass. Um, the last parameter is the channel name, Redis1. So we will actually use this channel throughout the application. You'll see here in a minute. Um, and that's it. That's all you have to do to configure it. You should be able to run the app. should connect to Redis just fine. Um, but now we're going to talk about actually using it and storing data inside of it. 
pretty straightforward as well. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new controller here. We're going to need a caching provider. And we're going to need a caching factory. Whoops. Caching provider factory. Got it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and instantiate that, initialize that from a controller, um, our provider. All right, great. So our provider is actually going to be, we're actually going to create this from the factory. So this does not need to be initialized from the constructor. We're going to go ahead and do this dot caching provider factory um, dot get caching provider. And this is where we pass through the channel name again. So this is going to be Redis 1. So this is basically what you are setting up in your startup as well. You're using your Redis cache, you're setting your channel here, and then you're listening for that channel here as well. Um, Redis 1 is, our, is the channel we're using. So that's where you're locating it at. Uh, once you have that, you are pretty much logged into the queue, or you're logged into the cache, sorry. Um, and you're, you're good to start interacting with it. So we'll create a test method here. Uh, I action results. Um, let's just set item in queue. Since this is a controller, we're going to set a um, the route for it, and then we'll do this dot caching provider set the key. So this is uh, typically some type of unit unique ID you use to set and then get the value. Um, we're going to start off with let's just do uh, test key one two three. The value is here is my value. And then the third parameter is actually a time span for how long the item lasts in the queue. So you can set this to however long you want, um, just depending on what your use case is. You may just want to cache things for 30 minutes. You may want to cache things for three years, just depending on you know what you're doing with your application. So that's it. That's the three parameters. The ID, the value, and the time span for how long you want it in the queue. Once you have that set, We'll go ahead and just say return. Okay, good. This should be good to go and we should be able to run it. So once we hit this um, API controller, we should be able to see that the item was added to the queue. All right, so this is, the controller name is Redis and then the item is set. Localhost cannot be found. I have a feeling that's because I forgot the slash here. Let me just make sure I got that. Try this again. We'll do Redis and then set. Okay, weird. I'm not sure why the page localhost cannot be found. Okay, sorry about that. I just realized this method has been uh, public or private the whole time. So switch that to public. Your uh, your HTTP HTTP method should not be private, obviously. Um, so let's try this again. We've got uh, the method set up here. It should be Redis uh, slash set. Let it load here. Redis slash set. Awesome. So that looks like it loaded. And now in our queue, if we refresh here, there it is. So there is our new object we created, uh, test key with the key. And here is my value. Sometimes it can look a little bit um, messy, but that's just for some reason why uh, the way that uh, Redis stores it. When you take it back out, you'll get the actual value. So that's how you set a value. <clears throat> Now let's talk about actually getting the value back out of it. So if we want to create a new method here, we'll do a public void, public I action result, get item in queue. And you're just doing the same thing basically. You're just getting it, but now you just passed through the key. Caching provider, get uh, your, yeah, just passing through the caching key. Oh, got it. Yeah, it's looking for an object type, so we'll just pass through a string. 
Great, so what we should get out of that is the actual value. So what we're gonna do is return okay, and we'll return item. All right, so what we should get now is once we hit this, we should get the value, here's my value on the page. So let's go ahead and load it. Um, like you saw, you pass through a, an actual type as well, so I have to pass through a string because that's what I'm storing. Um, if you're passing through an object, you would just pass through the object type as well, just like anything else. Um, so Redis slash get. Boom, there you go. It has a object where you can get all the data out of it. Uh, there's the value that you set. So if you really wanted to, you could do value and get the value out of that if it's actually there. So that is the most simplest form of setting and getting a value. There's a few other methods you can utilize as well if you really want to. Um, you have this dot caching provider exists to see if something exists. You have remove, so if you want to remove it. Um, so really those are the main four you're going to be using. Get, set, remove, and exist to make sure that your, all of your, uh, your keys are there. So that is a super simple way to improve uh, performance on your application. Um, this is a very basic example of how you can use it, but if you think of it in a larger scale for something like processing, like our application, we're processing thousands of database calls um, all at once, every request, and instead we moved that off to the server side and put it in a queue. I did a video on Hangfire queues, and we actually linked Redis with Hangfire so that we were able to process everything and then send it to our Redis cache. So the next time the user came to visit the site, it was instant. Um, major performance gains out of that too. We went from five to eight minute uh, API load times for one single request um, down to milliseconds, down to 80 to 120 milliseconds. So it wasn't even, the load wasn't even noticeable to the end user. Um, so that's a super simple way, like I said, uh, Redis is really easy to use. They also have uh, PubSub if you want to do uh, publish and subscribe as well. I may do another tutorial on how to use that in .NET Core. Um, we've done that with plenty of oil and gas applications for um, processing different values, running simulations, um, <coughs> building on the fly designs, um, all of that. So that is Redis queues and or Redis caching and how to set up in .NET Core. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put it in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to answer it. Uh, as well as if you have any other technologies you want me to review or libraries you want me to show you how to, how to integrate with .NET Core, I can definitely do that as well. So thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.